Hey guys, Darren Carr here, coach of Wise Ocean Pods, and welcome back to another episode about AFL Fantasy Preseason. On today's episode, we've got some exciting content coming to you as we got our first official look at some AFL games over the, the past week and a half with some match simulations happening around the country. Um, on today's episode, we will be going through each game, game by game, and to be a little bit different to some other content creators, I thought I'd also just create a team from what we saw based on those those games and just provide something different to some other content creators so without further ado let's get into it alrighty so we're here on the AFL Fantasy website and before I get stuck into the Smash Sim reviews I really just wanted to touch base with what my main takeaways are from these match simulations um, because there can be a lot of funny funny business that happens with these match simulations just with a lot of absentees game times different roles happening so I don't really focus on too much. I can't really take too much away from these match simulations, but there's a few key takeaways. So one being I really want to focus on the role that these players have, the ones that we're really considering, just making that a priority, making sure that they've really got that role that we've been talking about all preseason. Sort of like a um, Hayden Young, does he really have that midfield role? We'll get into that a little bit later. But yeah, just really focusing on what role they have and if that is come true. Um... I don't really focus too much on the scores as such, just because there's there's very different factors what happen here. There's so many different players rotating in and out of certain roles where people are getting thrown around, so I don't focus on scores too much, and I don't focus on time on ground as such. The only caveat with that is if a player misses the match team entirely. That's the only thing that I won't really allow for, especially in this video today when I'm making a team. Um, the second one will, will, is just m really making sure that the players that I'm considering are fit and healthy, just really keeping an eye on them as they play. Do they look like they're moving smoothly? Do they look like they're moving pain-free? Um, just it, really just wanting to double-check that they're generally healthy. Um, and it could really be the decider at the end of the day. Um, if you think that someone isn't moving as smoothly as they could or there's someone else that is a bit generally a bit healthier and you're considering them that could be make, really make the decide effective when it comes to picking your round one side. So that's number two. And my third thing is really just focusing on if the club has changed up their game style in any way, just as that can have a lot of fantasy implications on, on multiple different players. Um, for example, we'll get into this a little bit later, but North seemed to have moved to a bit of a, a faster role so what imp what fantasy implications does that have on their players? So those are the main three takeaways. Um, anything else besides that is not in t not in my considerations as such. So alrighty, so let's get into these match simulations. Um, quickly before I do that, I just wanted to give you a huge shout out to AFL Central on Twitter, just for all the the pre match uh, pre season stats that they did. Um, I'll put a link in my description to check those guys out if you are interested on looking at their stats at all. So just a huge shout out to those guys in providing all the stats that I, I may mention throughout this this video. So, alrighty, so let's start with the first game, which was Melbourne and Richmond. So we'll start with Richmond here. So Richmond's probably the worst team to start with, really, as they really didn't run any of their midfields. Through the through uh, through the game at all really, so there's not a huge a lot I could read out of that game, really at all. The only real midfielder they had in there was Hopper, and they had Dow in there that could potentially get a chance in the midfield this year. Whether he gets a round one debate, I'm not too sure. We'll have to wait and see on that one. But the main takeaways I had for them was that Short had the halfback role, kind of as expected. Um, didn't really have much CBAs at all, which you probably would have expected a little bit given how many mids missed this game. So he definitely has a halfback role, took a few kick ins, um, and is potentially an option you could start with. But in this case, I haven't started with him in this team. So um, the only other one I had for Richmond was Gibkiss. He looked fit and healthy, um, definitely has a sort of a, a fullback role taking on the big midfielders. He definitely, uh, not midfielders, big forwards. Um, looks to have good job security. I'm not expecting huge scores, but just with the job security and how many mini, um, how many 
defender rooks we have, I have slotted him in this team on the bench so far. So here is our first selection at this point in time. I'll scroll down here and make this a little bit better. Um, I should mind zoom out. Um, all right, let's move on to Melbourne. Where's Melbourne? Here we are. So some of the notes I had for Melbourne were that Gorn, Gorn just looked elite as a solo ruck, as we sort of expected. Um, did what he needed to to sort of confirm that he's fit and healthy. Didn't I don't think he played the entire game. He was up sort of against the second-rate ruckman with Nank out. So for that, I'll throw him in the team for now. Um... One person I'll touch on was Oliver. He only played the second half and looked obviously really good coming up against the second sort of a BFL team. Um, for me, he's too risky. I for that I just I, I can't pick him just with him being on the outer of the side. The side, even though I do expect him to sort of play early on in the season, if not round zero sort of thing. So, um, if you want to take a pod. I highly recommend him as a chance because we know what he can do and he can definitely go big. Just obviously they have the um, early round buy, but could definitely be a big pod for you if you're willing to take the risk. Um, next one I will touch on is Billings. Um, Billings, he was okay without being... Great in my point of view, he sort of had a wing and a half roll, half forward roll. Um, he, I think, he got around twenty disposals over the entire game, but I don't. He didn't really super impress me. And do I think that role is certain for him? I don't think so. I think he'll move a bit more forward as the season progresses with just a few players returning from injury. Um, so for that reason, I haven't selected him in my side at this point in time. <laughs> Um, the other one I wanted to touch on was Marty Hoare. He only played in the second half and is definitely not looking like to be the best 22. For, so another reason I haven't selected him. Um, Caleb Windsor was the next person on my list and he looked great on the wing. He got got involved in a lot of the um, chains and really spread quite well to get uh, quite a few outside marks. Um really brought a bit of speed to that team so if he is a good bench option for me if not he could be a fieldable option at this point in time but i'll just slot him out in as that bench forward option at this point in time um the only other person i wanted to touch base on was where is he trent rivers so with the news that angus brayshaw are retiring it sort of just cements that trent rivers will sort of be that outside mid guy coming off the halfback providing a bit of run on the on that halfback sort of coming into the stoppages and he looked quite good coming in coming off the halfback in the match simulation um and even filled in as that third midfielder obviously because Oliver wasn't there uh Petrarca and Viney being the main two midfielders there so I uh, he is definitely in considerations for my side just need to consider whether there is enough upside in him at this point in time, considering that early bite as well. So I haven't selected him in the side, but I just wanted to touch base on him just to provide some of my opinions there. But that's really all I had for the first game. Let's move quickly on to the second game, which was huge for fantasy relevance, being North Melbourne v Collingwood. So <laughs> we have a lot of names to go through for North Melbourne. North Melbourne, you could pretty much pick an entire North Melbourne side, and I think you could have a quite a decent fantasy side this year. Um, I won't do that here, but there's definitely a consideration, and I'd actually be interested to see how they go if you were to pick a full North Melbourne side this year, because I definitely think we could have up to half a dozen in our team at this point in time. So the first thing I wanted to talk about before I get into any specific plays for North was that they look to, like I said off the top, they look to have changed their game style a little bit. They've uh, moved, they're starting to look like they're going to move the ball a bit quicker off half back, sort of chaining handballs through the midfield. Think of like a Richmond a couple of years ago when they were in their Premiership dynasty where they're running off half back, providing heaps of run, going through the midfield as quick as possible. Sort of like a, a short, a Rioli, and a Hulley, a Hulley, a Basha Hulley coming off the half back. We, knew, we know what they sort of did in previous years with short 
getting around that 105 to 110. Bash Hawley around that same mark. And Rowley probably just a bit behind them around that 80 to 90. So I definitely feel like there is a lot of potential for those for the halfbacks to score a lot of points. And that's why I've got a few of them in my team at this point in time, which we'll get into. So the first one I wanted to touch on, you can't go past Terry Sheasel. Why have I got this other? Never mind, look at that. Um, the first one we will touch on is Harry Sheasel. We all saw what he did in the game. He had 42 disposals and was the main distributor off that halfback, having a sort of a mainly halfback um, role with a bit of midfield time, which is probably what I expect to him to start off for the season. The club have confirmed that that's how he's going to start the season, but there is a bit of a flag there where he may his his role may shift over the season. So, but. If he's got that role, I think he's clear number two in that defensive line, just behind Dacos. You could even push Dacos a little bit, but I think for his price, he's a lock in that back line at this stage. So he's in this side. Um, next one I wanted to talk about was Zach Fisher. He clearly had that half roll, back roll, just confirming that he did have that role and he did look like he was best 22. He looked like he put his hamstring injuries behind him. He was moving quite freely. He did only play the first first half, but I think he showed enough. I think he had 19 disposals in that first half and really showed what he can do. Um, he sort of reminds me of a Daniel Rioli type where he's really giving a handball off and he's running past, getting another handball and getting kicked, so he gets a five points in that sort of one link quite regularly and he can spread for um, plus sixes where he's getting chip, uh, cheap uh, marks and whatnot. So I think he's also one that can be a lock in this side. I'll put him there for now, F2. Um, next one is McKercher. I just think he's an absolute lock. Don't even need him to say too much about him, but he looked like he had that half-back role. He pretty much stayed there the entire game and looked quite, quite stable there. So... Don't need to say too much about that one. Um, the next one I wanted to talk about was Wardlaw. So he only played the first half of the game, and he did quite solid. He was probably more of an impact player than an accumulator, but I still think he has plenty of upside in coming in this season. So for that reason, I have slotted him in this side so far. Um, yeah, he just looked quite smooth, got quite a few tackles. Probably just, again, needs to uh, improve his... His outside game and get a few marks through the midfield. Just if they're changing the game style, can he get more link ball? Hopefully, um, he's in my side at this point in time, so I'm hoping that. Um, the next one I wanted to talk about was LDU. He looked elite, as we sort of expect from LDU at this point. It's just really making sure that he's fit and healthy coming to the new season. Um, and he really did, he, he was getting a lot of chip ball, sort of being, in my eyes, he looks like the captain of the side and really leading the um, younger guys through that midfield group. So for that reason, he is in the side at this point in time, and I'll put him there, M4. Oops. Um, next one I want to talk about was uh, Jai Simpkin. Uh, I, he was quite poor in my eyes. He... He did have a few CBAs in the first half before moving to like a half forward role. He he really didn't score many points, even though he probably was that third midfielder. I really didn't like the look of him. He looked very slow and second rate, um, and it really has just put a line through him from in my eyes. So that's all I had to say about him. Power was the next one. Um, he was probably a bit quiet in the first half. He was probably playing more of a half forward role coming into the stoppage, sort of sort of like a um, Sam Flanders, getting a few tackles as a bigger body. Um, and before coming into the second half, he had some bulk CBAs with a few of the bigger guys, like a like a Wardlaw going down, like going resting the rest of the rest of the game. So um, I was quite bullish on him, and he is quite a pod if you are willing to give him a shot. Where he, there he is. Um, Priced at 518k, 57. He's definitely someone to consider, especially having forward status. Could fill in that uh, sort of F3 to F4 spot if you're not confident with a few others. 
Um, next one was Lazaro. He looked great and is a good bench option and he is definitely in this side. I'll put him on the bench for now, just in front of Caleb Windsor. Just, he looked great coming off like a half-forward flank, sort of spreaded well, being like a deeper wingman, spreading for a lot of uh, marks on that wing and really playing well off that half-forward flank. I can't really describe better than that. He really just spread well and did quite a few nice things and even had a few CBAs later on in the game, So, which is good to see. Um... Next one was, where is he? Dylan Stevens. So his one that a lot of people had their eyes on. He wasn't super high owned, but just because he's coming from a another side in Sydney Swans, he's a high draft pick. I think he was either pick five or pick eight, one or somewhere around that range in previous drafts. Um, we really wanted to see what role he had. He, there was talks that he could have been inside mid, but... We really saw that he was purely off the wing throughout most of the game. Um, didn't do a huge amount in from what I saw. Um, and just having midfield status only, I really don't feel comfortable paying nearly 500k for him if he's not going to have the inside mid role, just not having access to points. So I don't think there's enough upside, and I've kind of put a line through him at this stage. Um the next one, and probably the last one I'll touch on from this side, um, I'm going to touch on two, um, is X Airy. He looked elite as a mid midfielder, uh, as a ruckman, a pure sing solo ruckman. So he quite surprised me. I think he cracked a ton in the AFL Fantasy Points because he had 21 disposals and 30 hitouts. And, and it wasn't against like bad ruckman either. It was against Darcy Cameron and Max Cox, which really surprised me that he was able to put up such a decent score because I thought he'd probably be more of that 80 to 90 guy just being a bit slower but he actually really proved me wrong that he um, looked really nice and looked quite nimble getting quite a few tackles and really getting on the outside of the outside and getting a few um, midfield ball as well so for that reason he is in the side and the only other one I wanted to throw in there was Toby Pink he looked good off the halfback and looks to have good job security at this point in time I think he's ahead of a few other others there at uh, North Melbourne. And I think he just slots in there nicely at M8 at this point in time. So that's all I really wanted to talk about for North. What do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> eight North Melbournes in the side. Yeah, as expected, I guess. And there definitely could be a few more if you were to take a few punts on a few others. Um. Well, um, I, I just wanted to touch, uh, probably put a few flags out there that there was a few people missing from this squad, like a Bailey Scott, um, a Luke McDonald, a Will Power, uh, Will Phillips as well. So, where they slot into the their side is probably something we need to consider, especially when the upcoming games. We'll get a better idea. Hopefully, they're fit and we can get them. We get some get some looks at where they sit in terms of the squad. So. Just something to consider before cementing these guys into your side. Uh, next one was Collingwood. We'll jump over to Collingwood real quick. There's not a huge amount of fantasy-related people here. So, nearly it was just Nick Dacos. He sort of did as we expected in my eyes. He looked solid. Didn't do anything super amazing that we haven't seen before. Um, and there's no real concern there. So, if you are still keen on Nick Dacos, then go ahead and pick him. But I haven't picked him in this side for reasons we've discussed plenty of times. And just with that early buy and some of the tag risks I think you have early on. So he's out of the side at this point in time. Um, and the only other one I want to talk about was Finn McRae. <coughs> Sorry. Finn McRae. He had plenty of CBAs even in the first half with obviously a few of the stars missing in Pendlebury and a few others. Um, he had 18 disposals and looked quite quite decent in there but I still think he's sort of fringe 22 but for the I'll just chuck him in this side for now and see how it come up at the end if, if he can slop in in there so all right let's move on to the third game we'll go to Sydney Swans against GWS starting with Sydney Swans so there's a few fantasy relevant people here as we've all come accustomed to um Grundy being the number one, really can just confirming how much ruck time he's going to have. It really looked like he had 75 to 80 percent ruck time. I think um, McLean was his backup ruckman, only coming in when he was off the ground. So that was really positive to see. 
Um, he looked like he was moving quite well, a bit healthier. Um, it was sort of his first hit out being a solo ruck in quite some time, so really wasn't sure how he was going to go. But he looked, he was a tackling machine. I think he got eight tackles throughout the game. Um, what I would have probably like to see a little bit more was just getting some of that ball on the outside, being a bit of a, another midfielder there, which I think will come in throughout the season. So for that reason, I have actually selected him in over Gorn at this point in time. So putting in to put a, putting him in, providing a bit more value at this point in time. Um, next one is James Jordan. I really liked the role, the role he had. He played a lot of wing and midfield role. He probably had 20% mid inside mid. I probably don't expect it to continue that high, just with a few of the other guys missing, like Adams. So that's the only reason. And uh, Sheldrick was there as well, where, the, where he plays. Um, some of the news that's happened recently just with how late I'm recording this, was um, that Luke Parker has broken his arm, so that probably leaves a spot open for Sheldrick to come into the side a little bit. Um, who knows how long Parker's going to be out for. Broken arms can probably be anywhere from eight, the six to eight weeks, so that could be six to eight weeks of uh, Angus Sheldrick being in the side, probably getting 57 CBA, so it probably could be a consideration if you're willing to do that. Um, Swans do have a nice run, so whether you can slot another one in with that early buy is your consideration. But I haven't selected him in the side at this point in time. But I have selected James Jordan just with that role. I think there's plenty of value, and he slots in nicely in that forward line. Um, like I said, Adams missed the game, so that's the reason why I won't pick him in this team, just with just because I'm not confident that he... He's fit and healthy, just there's no other reason why he shouldn't have missed the game besides being a bit older. And yeah, oh, I, I can't I can't really explain it. There's not much that has been said about why he has he's missed the game. Um, I may have to, I may have missed it, but um, yeah, I haven't selected him in the squad. Um, the only other notes I really had was that Heaney. Oh wait, sorry, I'll go back to Adams. For me to pick him in my squad, I really need to see something in the something in the preseason game in the community match and round zero he needs to go big or at least prove that he's sort of that 80% guy in at least one of those games and put up a decent score for me to really consider him at this point in time because the way I like to look at these pretty much uh, these match simulations as I said was I want them to be fit and healthy and if they miss then it doesn't look like they're fit and healthy and that really puts a, a nail in the coffin for me at the end of the day when it comes to round one selection so I really need to see something from him to uh, select him. The next point I wanted to make was uh, Heaney. Heaney had a lot of CBAs, which seems to happen every single year, which is just funny. Um, I don't think it will continue just with how much how deep that midfield is. He should play that forward flank, deep midfielder, a uh, deep, deep forward kicking goal. So, and I think he's just too expensive at that price, being at seven two two. Saying that, he probably could push um, top six forwards if he were to have some CBAs. So it's definitely something to look at. But I think just with the structure of the teams going this year, I think you don't want to spend too high up in the mid in the forward line, especially with someone like a Heaney with a risk there. So um, I haven't picked him and I haven't considered him to date. So don't really want to chop and change my team too much. Um, next one was Roberts here. Priced at 245k, he played okay off the halfback, probably butchered the ball a little bit and sort of was a third in line behind Lloyd and Blakey. Um, so at this stage, he's a good bench option. I'll throw him in there, probably that's put in there. Um, yeah, enough said. It would be really dependent on whether he gets selected for round one or not. I'm not confident, but, for more, uh, for, but he's a good bench option at this stage until we know a bit more. I've already touched on Sheldrick. Um, only one, I, only other one I wanted to talk about at the Swans was that Golden looked to be elite once again. Um, he only came on in the second half or late on in the second quarter, and absolutely tore it up. I think he got like ninety fantasy points in in the second half alone. So he looks to take it on, take it up to another level, and could be huge this year again. 
Um, did get quite a few CBAs, but like I said, did only come in in the second half when a few of the other guys had been rested. So it's really up in the air whether he's going to have a lot of the CBAs this year or he's still going to be on that wing. Still a bit of play out on this one, but based on that performance, I think he's just a lock at M1 for this team anyways. So I don't personally have him in my team at this uh, yet, but he's definitely consideration. Just with that early buy is my only flag. So whether I want to pay up for him. I've uh, been pretty strong all preseason that I don't want to have a my Uber premiums to have a early buyer, but he may force my hand at the end of the day with his scoring history. So, all right, moving on to the flip side, we will move on to GWS. I'll just start going through this a bit quicker because I don't want this to be a too long of a video. Um, Tom Green, he looked quite solid. I think he had 30 disposals. Didn't do anything amazing, just as expected. He probably is a bit of value, but uh, again. Uber Premium has an early buy. I won't select him in the side just yet. Um, Cogs was, again, as probably expected, probably a uh, second midfielder. Looked really good, as expected. Kelly looked to be back in the midfield role, back in the main three. So he's probably someone that's a bit underpriced. I don't even know where he is at in here. Kelly, 884k. Probably a bit of value there. Could bump that up if you were keen enough. Um, but for me, I'm not super keen at this point in time. Uh, Cadman was the only one I also wanted to touch on. He looked really solid in the match simulation. He kicked four goals upfield and ha really can provide that um, that's cheap midfield op uh, forward option. So I'll just throw him in as that utility spot. Oh, actually, I'll switch him with um, Caleb Windsor at this point in time. Just as a cheaper, cheaper forward rock uh, midfield. What am I going about? Cheaper forward rookie. Um, I don't expect four goals every game, but he looks to have good job security alone alongside Hogan. So I think he can provide a bit of value there. Um, the only other one I want to touch on who was a bit more relevant. Toby Green didn't play, and Whitfield kind of just did what was expected. Didn't really shine too much. I think he had maybe 20 or so disposals, didn't do anything that was super noteworthy, so um, for that reason I haven't selected him inside. But that's all I had for that game. Let's quickly move on to the next game, which was Colton v Geelong. So there was a few fantasy relevant guys here. We'll start off with Geelong. Um, firstly, let's just touch on Guthrie. His ownership has massively dropped, but obviously because he got injured in the first eight seconds of the game. Coming up with a, I think it was a quad. Um, he's now out for eight to ten weeks, so that instantly rules him out. Um, in saying that, he was probably one of my lesser people that I was looking at as, as a mid mid price midfield option. There's probably five good decent options there. He's probably on the last one for me. Definitely is definitely. <laughs> he's uh, not playing now, so we can skip on through that one. Um, Jai Clark, I actually thought he was really solid and he will be coming onto my bench because he had a lot, of, plenty of CBAs and looked quite good with the ball, providing some good tackles and providing some good in, inside mid-roll. And I think having Guthrie out only secures his role a little bit more. So I like him as a bench option and he definitely could be even fieldable coming in the actual season. So um, Next one is Stewart. I thought Stewart was a little quiet on the day. Whether that was just a little bit of management for these older guys. He is, what, 20, 30, 30 years old now, so there's probably a bit of management there. He didn't take a huge amount of the kick-ins with Duncan there, um, but I think he has a very similar role to last year, and I still think he's a lock for for top six defender, and I think he's still a bit of value, so for that reason, I have locked him in. Um, we'll go on to O'Sullivan. I like the look of him. He sort of played that half, a fullback role. Um, didn't get a huge amount of touches just playing that fullback role. So I don't think he's worth paying up for at this point in time. He may prove me wrong. I may see something else in the um, the preseason. But at this stage, I haven't picked him. Um, next one was Conway. Conway played about 50% ruck time with Stanley. And he's definitely a potential R3 option. I will just use him as a R3 option at the moment. Just to provide a bit of money on the bank, uh, money on the bench, to maybe do a few things later on. 
if I need to drop him down to a looping option, then I will. Um, any other one was I want to touch on was um, Sean Manor. He only came on in the second half. He wasn't great from what I saw. He did a few nice things. Um, I think he set up a few goals here and there. Played had some CBAs, but I don't expect him to be in the side. He may even be the sub. So. He's probably one of the guys that I have not selected in the side so far. He he could probably even replace Cadman as a as an option if you were keen on him starting, but I'm not super keen at this point in time. Switching on to the flip side of things, we'll go to Colton. Now, I won't have a huge amount of people here to talk about because Zach Williams didn't play. He was absent, just still having that knee concern with obviously coming back on ACL didn't get to play again and I do have some confirmation that he won't be playing the Amy community game as well so that's a huge red flag for me and I am leaning towards not starting him at all in the 2024 season so he is probably someone I'm avoiding at this point in time and I do expect that ownership to drop quite significantly um the only other one was Sam Walsh um obviously didn't play as well I think he's got some complaints with his back again, so that's not a good look for him. And just having that early buy really just hasn't hasn't interested me at all. So um, didn't see a huge amount of Bailey Billy Williams, so haven't com- included him. Didn't see much of Bins. Kerner did some nice things, but not not willing to pay up for that for a full forward and Fantasia. They have so many small forwards. I don't think his scoring potential is going to be huge each week. Did a few nice things and passed off a few goals, but I don't expect him to be anything great for us in fantasy, but I could be proven wrong. But that's all I really had for Colton. Team's looking all right so far. We'll just keep moving on here. So next one was Brisbane and the Suns. So let's start with the Suns, just because we have a few more fantasy relevant people. So we'll go with Sexton, Sexy Deck. He... Really proved to be that halfback distributor, which really surprised me. Dimmer wasn't lying, so he actually looked quite good for my eyes. He did probably just just uh, butcher the ball a little bit, um, just trying to take a few kicks that he probably wasn't ready to take. So and turning it over quite a few times, but I think he will improve as he gets more experience in that role. And I think Dimmer has really backed him in that role. So if he is named round one in that halfback role, I think is a lock at that price. Even if it is only until Lockie Weller sort of comes back from in- injury, I think he can make a lot of cash quite early on, priced at only 42. As a halfback role, he could probably easily push 70s, if not 80s. Just providing a bit of chip. He was really spreading quite hard when teammates had his had the ball in hand and trying to get that, that cheap 45 mark. So... I liked him, and I liked the way he was sort of hungry for the ball. So he's a lock on my side at this point in time. Um, Next one was Flanders. I think he's an absolute lock for F1. I think he's probably 10 points above the next best in the forward line. Um, He just is so hungry for the ball. He's easily the fourth midfielder at the Suns, um, playing off that half-forward midfield role. Snakes forward for a few goals and just spread so well to get those uh, those um, easy marks. So I think he's an absolute lock, even with that uh, that uh, early buy in round three. So just with the the value he presents, he probably can easily put ten pe- ten points on his uh, his price at this point in time. Sorry, there's a fly in here. Um, a few others I had I just want to talk about was Took Miller looked to be back to his best and definitely provides a bit of value, I thought. He's definitely back in that midfield role, running quite hard, tackling hard. So he's one I have put into my squad at this point in time, but just with that round three buy, I don't know if I can pay for it up, just with a few other guys in consideration. Um, Bailey Humphrey was the only one I was sort of interested in. He was quite poor, to be honest. I expected a lot more from him, just with a bit of hype around in the Suns. He didn't really have many CBAs at all and didn't really provide much at all throughout the game. So I didn't really hear any stats from him. So here's one I put a line through. Just with a forward status, he would have been handy to have if 
you weren't fancy on any of the other options at that price range. So that's what we want to touch base on the Suns. Yorland, he played in the match sim, but I don't expect him to actually play in the season start, just with a few better options. Um, Malta didn't play, I don't believe. Woodrick did a few nice things. I just don't don't think I could pay 500k from him at that point. I think I prefer um, an Alex Sexton, just with the you know having that forward status is a bit more nice in my eyes. So willing to take the risk there. Let's just move on to Brisbane, which there's only really one person I really want to talk about here, which is um, Coleman. He looked elite off the arse back. May being that main distributor, the only flag really was that uh, McKenna wasn't playing. Who sort of that his sort of second fiddle takes a lot of the kick-ins. So um, Coleman really had a lot of that, and probably Makocha will cut into a lot of that um, that role. So I don't expect him to really replicate that. But we'll see. Hopefully, in the next coming games, that. Uh, whether McCurcher is in that, that starting squad and can really determine whether Coleman is a good pick at this point in time. But I've put him in the side just because he was so uh, so dominant off the halfback. But really, there's no one else that I was really keen on. Bailey Williams had a bit of CBA time, but nothing really too significant that I thought that was interesting. Obviously, Lockie Neal missed, um, so they needed to throw someone else in there. <coughs> And he's, he's done that from time to time, and I think he's more of an impact player, not a fantasy accumulator. So that's just my thoughts there. But let's just quickly review where we're at with the team so far. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Oh, not that far. All right, so we've got Harry Shears on D1, Stewart and Coleman, with Gibkiss and Pink on the bench. We've got Golden at M1, Luke Davis, Uniac, Wardlaw, and McKercher. we got... Um, Roberts and Clark on the bench. We've got Grundy and Xeria on, on the field, and then Conway as an R3 option. Our forward's looking pretty good with uh, Sam Flanders, Fisher, Jordan, Sexton, and McRae, with Lazaro, Windsor, and Col uh, Cadman on the bench. So we've got our bench is completely full. They may chop and change from there here on out whether we come against a, better, a few better options. So let's move on to the next game. So we'll talk about the Western Bulldogs v Hawthorne. Starting with the Western Bulldogs. Um, firstly, Sanders is an absolute lock. I don't really need to say too much about that. He was just dominant in that midfield playing the first playing the first half. Um, it's just, yeah, one thing I need to touch on is just the way the Bulldogs really lined up in the match sim, playing sort of 50-50 with their midfield squad, with Bontempelli and Trelaw playing in the second game. So it was really Liver, Harms and Sanders in the first game, taking, taking up the majority of the CBAs. Um, so we just need to sort of see how that plays out in the coming games, just with how that lines up. But I think he's, he's a lock. I think he was better than Harms, so I think... If they choose to run a fourth through that midfield, it would be Sanders. And possibly, I think McRae is definitely on the outer, so I don't think he'll get any CBAs this year and could even be dropped by the end of the year. But we won't talk about him here because he's been an injury some concern and I think he could possibly miss the start of the season just because with, with some of the news coming out of the, the club, seeing... Him being a bit frustrated with his injury concerns at this point in time. So, but what I want to talk about was Harms looked quite good. Obviously, strong CBAs in that first half of the game, but I sort of expect him to play more of a half forward role come the full season. So, that's one of the reasons I haven't selected him, even though he's probably a decent price and provides a bit of value. I can see him probably pushing 80, but probably not enough upside for me with a few of the. Uh, more value guys in the forward line. Um, Coffee looked really solid. I really liked him. He sort of looked like he was best 22. He did a few nice things, took a few intercept marks. Don't think he took any kick-ins that I saw of, but he definitely looks like he's going to be best 22. I have probably killed my expectation a little bit on him. Not probably expecting 70s each week, but maybe 50s to 60s. 
which still provides plenty of value for me. Hopefully he gets closer to 60 than he does to 50, providing some good value, especially at uh, D6 with all the limited rookies we have. Um, that's all I really had for Western Bulldogs. I'll just probably touch on English, obviously didn't play until the second half. I think he probably slots in close to that D uh, R1 to R2 spot by the end of the year. He's still an elite ruckman, just with a few injury complaints at this point in time. Still battling to be ready for round one. Or, yeah, round one. Um, Caleb Daniel looked to be on that half forward in the half back role, really just watch, switching and changing wherever they needed him to. So um, I couldn't, I couldn't support the pick. If if you want to, then I won't talk out of it. But I didn't see any upside for me, not at that ninety price. So the only one I'll probably talk about was Libertore. He looked to be really fit. Um, he did quite well, and I think he probably could push that price up even again. He just looked so fit and strong, so definitely could be a pot option if you're keen on him. So uh, let's just quickly move on to Hawthorne. Not too much fantasy relevant here, but firstly, Sicily, he was sort of playing that second uh, tall defender in the first half. Just, obviously, um, Blank has gone down with an ACL. So he has to play that second tall, fall, uh, t tall defender next to Frost. Um, so he definitely didn't get as much of the chip ball that we're probably used to seeing him get. Um, I actually really liked um, Scrimshaw, one I haven't actually noted here. But he looked really good and looked to be ta taking that Sicily role. And one that you could pro possibly consider if you were interested. I don't even know where he is. Let's go past him. Where are you? No, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, he's definitely one you could consider. He's in my um, favourite list. I'll just talk about him later. Um, Connor McDonald was one that was probably a bit on the higher ownership, so he was really poor in my eyes. He didn't really have a favourable role playing that half forward flank. Didn't get a huge amount of the ball. And I don't expect a side like Hawthorne, who's probably more on the bottom end of the ladder, to really be much into their forward line. So it probably doesn't mean he gets much of the ball. Um, a few interesting ones was Husswaite and McKenzie. They're sort of battling for that um, third, fourth Ruckman spot, probably behind um, Newcomb, Ward and Nash, possibly. So I think Husswaite probably got the better of McKenzie, playing more of a CBA dominant role. Whereas McKenzie was sort of more of an, a bit of a wingman coming into the stoppages here and there. So for that reason, I haven't really picked either of them, but I definitely could support both of them if you were keen on them. A price at that 450 mark, they definitely value. If they can have the decent role coming to the start of the season, just I'm not too sure with how long will days out for whether it's going to be worthwhile. If it's only three weeks, then it's probably a bust of a pick. I don't think three weeks is going to be enough to get that uh, cash rise, and they could be pushed out of the team quite quickly. If it's more than, if it's more likely uh, four, five, six weeks, then it could possibly be worthwhile pick because they can jump up in price quite quickly um, in those sort of weeks. Um, only other one I want to talk about was Dan Rosio. Um, he was elite coming off that halfback. I think he had 29 disposal or something like that. He played a lot of <coughs> halfback and wing. Um, the only flag I have with him was that Amon didn't play for some God knows reason. Um, so we really need to look at what Amon does to his role, whether the, he pushes him more to the wing, because I think all preseason his uh, Dan Abrosio has been playing as a wingman. So that could really limit his uh, output. And then he probably doesn't have enough upside at his 52 price for me to push it, put him in my side. But for now, until we see a bit more, just because we're basing this whole team off match sim, I've slotted him as my D5. Just because I haven't selected Zach Williams, who was who could also sit nicely there if you were willing to take the pick. But I haven't at this point in time. Alright, so let's just finish off these last three games real quick before I lose my voice. So, next one we come up is 
the Saints v Bombers. Let's just start with the Saints. Um, so, to begin with, I thought Steele looked back to his fit and healthy. He looked to put a bit, bit more size back to what he's more what we're more used to seeing Steele like. He was tackling quite quite well. Um, he was spreading for the ball, getting a few marks, and really looked to be fit and healthy, and I think he's primed to break out again this year and really push back up to that um, 105 to 110 range. So I think he's a lock, and I think he's pretty stock standard in most sides. Put him there at M3. Um, Wilson, Darcy Wilson here. I think he has plenty of opportunity. He looked really good in the match sim, especially when, um, what's his name, went down. Where is he? Windhager went down with a broken hand. He sort of came in to the side a lot more. And I think he's a good bench option if he is named come round one. So for that reason, I think he has better job security than, say, a Matt Roberts. So I'll switch them out and put him there. Where did he go? He was down there. So just made that little adjustment there. Um, one thing person I want to talk about was Marshall. I think he is primed to take that R1 spot and probably even provides a bit of bit of value if you were willing to take the punt. I reckon really put think he could push that 120 this year. But I think we have too much value in the rucks to be messing around with paying up one, over a million dollars for a ruckman. It's definitely a good play because he could provide a good um, captain option if that's the way you want to go. I just think there's better captain options in the midfield, say an M1 as such, a Bonifelli or an Errol Gordon. It is nice that he doesn't have the early buy, which could play in your favour, but I think just with the three main rucks in Gorn, Grundy and Xera, we have too much value, so I can pick him at this stage. Um, where are we at? So, we next one I want to talk about was Wangaline Malera. He was Ali off of that halfback, being that main distributor. The only flag was that Sinclair wasn't there. Um, sort of can tie this in with Bonner as well. It was sort of the first look we got at Bonner since he's moved over to Port, but I don't expect him to be that main distributor off halfback and providing that run with Sinclair back. So that's a bit of a flag for both of them if you were keen on a Bonner. Um, but... He did what expected, and I do still think he's a bit of value and can improve on his 91 average. So, for that reason, he has been selected in this squad at this point in time. Put him back to M3. Moving on. Who else did I have? I didn't really have anyone else. Obviously, um, Win Hager broke his hand, so that sort of cuts him out of any consideration. I'm not sure on the timeline of that. Probably very similar to broken arm, which would be a lot of so that six to eight weeks. Um, Paddy Dow didn't play just with a bit of an injury concern. I can't remember. I think it was a knee he's still concerning about. So he's sort of faded away a little bit as that mid that mid price option. And no one else really looked any good. Maybe Liam Henry provided a bit of bit of value. He looked pretty good off a half forward wing roll. Um, but not for me at this stage. So we'll move swiftly on to <gasps> <clears throat> North Melbourne. No, not North Melbourne. I'm talking about Essendon. So there's not a huge amount of guys. There's only a few guys I really wanted to look at here just to confirm the role. So mainly being Nick Martin, just really confirming that he did have that halfback role that has been highly spoken about in recent time. He definitely did, and he looked elite at it. He accumulated a lot of the ball. He didn't take as many marks as I probably would have liked, but definitely... Got around the ball, had a few tackles, which was good to see, and I think he is a great pick, and he has been selected in this side for that reason. Um, definitely provides plenty of value, priced at 85. I think he can easily push uh, 100 in that role. He took a few kickouts here and there as well, and probably was the main target coming out of the, the back square as well, uh, out of the defensive square, So, which is good to see, and uh, I think that can provide a lot of value. Just really want to confirm over the next game or two that he does not um, get pushed out into the wing he, if there was someone else or the game style suited it because that could lead him back to that sort of 85 range where he could have very low scores as we've seen. 
Um, only other one I wanted to talk about was Parish and Merritt. They just confirmed exactly what we expected. They were the mainstays in the midfield. Um, Parish is probably a good um, pod if you were keen on starting one of the uh, Essendon boys. Just obviously 80% midfield time. Um, looked really good. They did exactly what we expected. There was a bit of a concern with um, Parish. Uh, not sorry, with Merritt having a bit of a knock and not playing the second half, but I don't think there's any too much of an injury concern there, and I think he could start the season quite well. But I haven't selected him in the side just because I think Gordon's probably a better, um, better uh, M1. So my next Porter pick was just touching on Titus. Titus, uh, Cheetus, I think is his name. Um, he sort of played mainly off of that wing, um, predominantly off that wing, and he played quite decently. I thought he spread it quite well and definitely could provide an option as a forward for us. Presta only 53. I think he could probably push um, closer to 70 in that in that role. So let's select him, him for now. That's really all I had for that game. I didn't really have too many concerns about other people. Um... Nick Caddy didn't play, so that's a bit unfortunate. And Caldwell sort of played a half-forward role, so definitely not something I'm considering at that point in time. So let's just move on to the next game, which is the showdown, the Port v. Crows. So we'll touch on Crows here first. A few fantasy-relevant people here. This is probably where we'll start to see a few changes. Obviously, we've only got one uh, spot left in the midfield with 700 and 35k so we'll see how we go here so um first one i want to touch on was that rankin had a lot of cbas which is something i didn't sort of expect he sort of played as that third midfielder probably ahead of definitely ahead of rochelle which is probably the one i expected the other way around rochelle to be ahead of rankin but it definitely didn't look that way um, I definitely think he's probably more of an impact player than an accumulator but he definitely could provide a bit of value if he continues that role, but um, still a bit to play out there, just with how their midfield mix looks, with um, Crouch, Dawson, Laird, trying to fit Rankin in there, and then a few others, like Saligo, and <coughs> a Peddler, or Shelley, how do they go with that? But it definitely from that match, him looked like um, Dawson was probably more on the outer, he sort of played off, did a bit more forward time, and just playing as a sort of a, a fixed role, which I sort of expect for, for him a little bit this year, so I can't justify a paying over a million dollars for him at this point in time. Um, Crouch looked really good, as expected. Discontinued his form from the, end, from the last few games of last year. Could definitely see him picking, bit, him being picked, but I haven't picked him in this squad just because I'm not a huge fan of the Crows' um, starting fixture with a few higher squads, so... He, but he's definitely looked like to be that second midfielder. I would just like to see a bit more um, um, game time from him. Um, the only other one I want to talk about really was that Curtin was probably a bit underwhelming and is definitely no certain for R1, in, around one in my opinion. Um, he probably was quite quiet in the first half. I don't even know if he actually played, but in the second half he really played as that tall, tall defender. And for that reason, I don't think I'm willing to pay that 279k price target for someone who's definitely not cemented and probably doesn't have a huge fantasy role. So I'll avoid him at this point in time. But yeah, that's, I really don't have any crows in my team, which is interesting. Um, definitely don't, wouldn't have thought that come preseason. Let's just move on to Port, the other side. There's a few here as well, so... Firstly, Zach Butters was is a lock in this side. Um, he was probably the second midfielder behind Wines, really at probably sixty to seventy percent. Um, probably managing a bit of time. Just looked a bit looked elite in there. Spread quite well. Was really hard at the ball. Um, yeah, I I think he's just a lock and is pretty much a give me this year. So. What I'll do to bring him in, who's probably on the outer here for me. Um, we will move... Well, let's just move Kitty Coleman, because I think someone else will come in in due time. So, he slots in at M2 for me. 
Um, next one I wanted to talk about was Wines. Obviously, he was quite prominent in the CBA as an attendee. I think he pushed back to his 90 ranges. I don't think he's super um, fantasy relevant just because he's more of an impact player. He doesn't, he's not super quick, so it doesn't spread quite well to get those marks. Um, he does tackle quite well, but I think just with the mix of uh, Butters and Rosie around him, just taking a lot of those tackles off him. So I do think he could improve. He probably is ahead of, um, what's his name, Crouch for me, just with a better run come the start of the season. So um, I would lean that way, but I still think that Nick Martin, out of those that price range, I think Nick Martin's probably the best option if you can afford him. Um, next one is, I just wanted to touch on Rochelle, uh, Rosie. He is a little bit highly owned so far. Um, he seemed to play a lot more forward in the match sim, just sort of switching and changing with um, Jason Horn francis playing out of the forward square. Um, so I expect probably him to drop in a little bit in CBAs, probably closer to 50%. Um, which is a bit of concern, so I don't know if I'd be paying that 950k range at this time for him. Just with a, but like I said, it's match simulation. Who really knows? They could be playing a bit of funny, but it, funny, funny games and uh, throwing players where they shouldn't be. And um, I could definitely see that flipping on its head round by round. So definitely a big watch come next week. Um, only other couple of ones I want to talk about was Sin. He was looking. He was looking like he was going to be a good bench option for us, sort of having that half back role. But he didn't play until the second half. Um, so I'm not certain that his that's his role. And he did he did okay in the second half. Probably just not not a, not a shining light as I sort of expected. So for that reason, he hasn't made my squad. The only other one I want to talk about was the uh, sweet ro uh, Soldo ruck split. So they sort of did a 50-50 split where Soldo sort of rocked the first first quarter, then Sweet sort of rocked the second quarter, and they sort of just did that back and forth the entire game. So really, I'm no closer to see who's going to be the number one ruck, whether they just split it 50-50 the entire time. Probably doesn't work in Sweet's favour, so probably paying up for that uh, 780, uh, sorry, 387k probably isn't favourable, but I definitely felt like Sweet had the the better Soldo in the Ruck battle overall, just had a few nicer hitouts, um, didn't give away so many free kicks, and generally provided a bit more around the ground, so I don't know, I'm not the coach, so unfortunately we can't force their hand, but we'll see how that plays out in the next game, um, but yeah, that's all I really had for that game so far let's just move on to the last game eagles versus west coast so start with the west coast eagles um firstly i want to touch on yo he looked fit and healthy he tackled really hard and worked really hard in the midfield even though he didn't score well like i said i don't focus on the score i just focus on role and he definitely had that full time midfield role um definitely will improve i expect and he looked really well so i expect him to break out again this year it is a lot to pay for someone who is made of paper, but I, if you're not on him and he goes well, then it could really destroy your season. If he does um, get injured early on, then I think it's quite an easy fix to go to someone, downgrade him to someone else. So for that reason, I have slotted him in this team. Um, how am I going to do that? How is I going to do that again? Let's just remove Wardlaw just because I don't, I didn't expect a huge amount from him, so let's just throw him in there. Um, move everyone up, and we'll put someone else there soon. Um, next one was Reed. Even though he looked quite poor, he didn't, I think he's got 26 points or something like that, with eight touches and one tackle. Uh, he, the role was definitely there, and I do expect him to improve, and the job security is elite, so... In that case, I actually prefer him over a Finn McRae just because of that job security. The price very similar. Um, Reed probably has the better role as a halfback, sort of midfield role. So I'm, I'm backing him in to improve. Um, only other interesting things I wanted to touch about for West Coast, not so much fantasy selections, was Duggan really played as that second tool defender with McGovern out. 
So I probably wouldn't expect that to happen every week, but we'll wait and see. Um, I know he was slightly more picked up beforehand. Um, Jimby obviously got knocked out. He seems to be that second, the second or third sort of midfielder behind Tim Kelly and Yo. So hopefully he's good to go for round one if he was someone you were considering. Could provide a bit of value, but um, didn't really do a whole lot before he got knocked out early on in the second, I thought, or late on the first. So I think he only had like a tackle or so. So definitely needs to get his hands more on the ball and not tackle as much. So wasn't really a huge consider for me. Um, Hunt was an interesting one for me just because he really took that um, main distributor role from the West Coast with... Um, Turn out so I could return to the well and go back to Jaden Hunt again for this season if he can win me another car that would be nice but I doubt he will do that um, I could definitely see him improving again on that that 77 price so but I think there's a few other guys around this sort of price that could break out in that defensive line like a Trent Rivers or a Jordan Clark so um, any I could see any three any one of those three really breaking out and becoming that elite midfield, uh, elite defender. So really trying to weigh up which one's probably best and if you can fit them into your side. Um, the only other one I want to talk about West Coast was Alex Willard. And I've really conceded here that um, I was quite bullish on him in my team reveal. I've really retracted that statement now, looking at where he's playing. He's sort of been, pl- he's sort of been pushed out into the wing time, wing role sort of swapping with Jaden Hunt. So definitely on the outer for West Coast and he def- definitely uh, isn't going to get that main distributor role. So I can't advise to pick him anymore. And I've put a line through him for my own team. So besides that, there's no one else I really would consider. Hall was obviously out with an injury. He was a good um, bench option. Bennett, if you want to switch um, Conway... You could put Bennett in there for a good looping option or even a... Where is he? I saw him just for Livingstone, he was he played on the weekend in the match simulation, so he's probably closer to that in that R3 option, especially with Flynn being out. He could play some early games if you wanted to have that R3 option early on. So something to consider. I don't expect them to score huge, though. So we needed to see really how long Finn is out with that surgery happening. So I think he has a um, torn tendon or something like that. So we'll wait and see on how long it's going to take to recover. Could be some quite some time. So um, moving on to Fremantle, the last team I wanted to touch on. And really it was just Fife looking fit and healthy. So um, he was a very smooth distributor in that midfield. Definitely played majority of the, the CBA roles. He just loves his uh, handballs. I think he had like 17 handballs and three kicks overall, but he only played the half. So still 20 touches in a half of football is quite good, but he ended up only scoring the 40 just because of how many handballs he had and very minimal tackles and uh, marks. He seemed to just be very taking it easy coming into the season. Probably just coaches instructions to, you know, take it easy. This doesn't mean anything. Don't hurt yourself. So I do expect him to improve coming into the season. So for that, I have put him into this side, probably ahead of um, Cheetahs, just with a bit more upside at that price range. So I expect him to probably push closer to 70, if not 80s, if he can get his tackling and marking game improving. So big watch on that. Um, next one was Sharp. He was absent for this game through illness, so no fault of his own. He's fully health, fully fit and healthy, just fell, fell, fell down with in, uh, illness on the day, so he's a big watch next week. But I expect him to come back into the side quite quickly, and for that reason, he is my M8. Um, so, yeah, big watch coming, coming in the next game, so... If he plays and he has that role, then lock him in. I definitely think he scores quite well and probably pushes closer to 70 and could be closer to these uh, two main boys and be that different um, third midfielder for us. Um, a few others was just Hayden Young. 
absolute lock of a pick for me. I think he's ahead of Wanganin Malira, so I'll just slot him in here. Um, I played as that midfield role, definitely confirmed it, that he got that role, played a little bit there in the first half, and then sort of as the game progressed, they needed to throw some some of the um, younger guys through there just to you know get their legs moving. So um, he moved back into the back line and didn't really do a huge huge amount from then. So no, no, not a huge concern for me. I I liked what he brought, and he's definitely that defensive mid for them. Definitely as a probably the the second or third midfielder. So. The only other one I really want to touch on was Brayshaw. Obviously, there's probably been some major headlines that he has got pushed out to the wing quite significantly, which is sort of what I expected in the long term with you know the return of Fife and um, Young in the midfield. So Sarong, Fife, and Young being the main three midfield stay attendees. So um, I definitely thought Brayshaw is more of an outside player and can provide a lot more on the wing than any of the other three, so uh, I, I definitely see that role continuing for him, sort of playing majority on the wing and playing spurts in the midfield, so I still think he could probably average around this mark, not saying that he's a huge fade at this point in time, just um, I don't see a huge amount of upside with that role, just not being around the ball as much, but we'll wait and see, some people are still quite bullish that he'll get back into that midfield, I just don't see how considering um, the others that are in there, especially with um, uh, Johnson as well. Um, a few other, uh, Another one I want to touch on would just Jackson. I know a few people were looking at selecting him just as just due to the fact that Gordon Grundy had that early round bye, um, that he could maybe sit in their forward lines and then you could rotate them in as the rounds go on, which was a bit of a sneaky... Sneaky strategy, but uh, he was quite poor on the weekend, and he made he played predominantly as a tall forward, not really having any ruck times. So, Sean Darcy was definitely the preferred number one ruck, so that was pretty dis disappointing to see, and I would definitely be fading Jackson at that price range. And last one was really just Jordan Clark. He was that main distributor off half back and got plenty of the cheap pill with Hayden Young moving to the midfield. So he definitely has some upside. It's just we really need to look at what is his potential. Can he push to a 95 if a not if not 100? Probably makes him a worthwhile pick. If he can only push to that sort of 85 to 90, then it's probably not a huge worthwhile pick at that price because it's not, not quite on the... Uh, top six defenders so here for that fact he's not quite in this team I don't think let me just double check I did have this team already previously done um well I'll check no he wasn't in oh wait he wasn't this team never mind so what I did just because I thought he was one of the main guys I moved this one, I dropped John Clark in there. Who did I move out? Who did I move? Oh, yeah, I got rid of uh, Conway and I put. Who did I put there? Bennett in there. Quickly do this. And what I did was I moved Jordan Clark there. So that is it for all the match simulations really so um hopefully that gave you a bit of insight on what i thought of the match sims these are all my own notes i watched all the games myself not hugely in depth but got in front of the tv and watched it so um these are all my own notes and i can say i watched it with my own two eyes so that's just my some of my opinion let's just run through the team once more again so hey harry sheasel tom stewart young Jaden clark yo and um, Caulfield in the back line on the on the field with Gibkiss and Pink on the defensive line. Um, really defense, really deep defense. Just because we've lost a lot of those um cheaper defensive options in a um a Chapman, a Williams, and a Marty Hall, who were probably mainstays in here early on in the preseason, just with them unlikely to be selected. 
so I've gone a bit deeper based on some of the performances. For the midfield, got Errol Golden, Butters, Steele, LDU, Nick Martin, McKercher, Sanders, and Sharp, and then Willison and Clark on the bench. Um, really dependent on round one selection, obviously, but I think sort of these three are a lock. Martin could be switched out for um, Crouch or Wines if you were keen on either one of those. And then these are three main rookie midfielders, I feel, in my opinion. And Golden can be switched out for any sort of primo uh, midfielder that you like. Could be a Merritt, could be a Bont, could be a Dawson if you're keen, or even a Laird. Um, I think this is sort of a good structure. Um, a lot of value in the ruck with Grundy and Xeri, and then Bennett as sort of that looping option. We'll sort of see where the R3 option sort of lies, whether we get a Conway or a, a Sweet, or even a um, Liverstone as that R3 option to provide a bit of cash. Jen, but there's definitely nothing wrong with going with a Bennett, who's probably never going to play and just provides that bit of a... Uh, a uh, captain loop option, so which has worked for me in the past. Um, forward line looks pretty good with uh, Flanders as R1, um, Fisher, Nat Fife, uh, James Jordan, Sexton, and Reed. All definitely have a lot of potential to increase their value and score quite well with uh, Lazaro, Cadman, and Windsor on the bench. So, overall, I think this is a pretty solid team. Um, 6k in the bank, just throw that on there, TV indication, 17.67, definitely won't happen, but, um, yeah, that's sort of where this, where my sort of team sits at, definitely, this isn't, to clarify, this is not my team, this is just based, purely based off the performances I saw in the match sim, and definitely a team that could be considered to start round one, um, um, what usually happens and what uh, I've experienced in my previous seasons is that post sort of um, match simulations, not a whole lot changes between the teams. It's really um, the preseason games really just confirm some of these final picks, just making sure that they're fit and healthy. You may have a few injuries here and there that may change a few things. Um, but generally, this is the main structure you'll probably see coming into the going to the season and it's probably a very vanilla team if you can say that um, there's a few probably lesser owned players and um, Jordan Clark 5% how do I flip them flip all cards does it tell me no it doesn't but yeah um, that's where we sit I think it's a good team if if you think so please let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video give me a like and subscribe if i've missed any information that i may have not considered please let me know in the comments i'd love to hear your feedback um but yeah that's all i had for today i really hope you enjoyed today's video really just going through match simulations um really now we've got to look forward to the community games coming up in a few days so i'll put up another video reviewing all those just to see if we, anything really changes probably a quicker video as such um but yeah that's all i really had for today hope you like like the video so like and subscribe and i'll catch you on the next episode